If you've used focus before, you'll have noticed that impeding takes some time to manually select areas. But thanks to focus and hands feature, you no longer need to waste that time. Just adapt a few simple mask settings and you're done. So the first step is setting up your image. Now, either you can upload your own image or just create a new one from scratch, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video. If you need any kind of tutorials about in painting, out painting, or how to face swap, for example, simply look on our YouTube channel and you'll find what you need. And if not, be sure to drop whichever kind of feature you're missing in the comments so that we can do a video about it. All right, so open the input image and then under inpaint or outpaint, input your base image, then scroll down a bit and enable advanced masking features. Then in the bottom right, select generate mask from image. All right, so it selected a multitude of things and that comes down to the model we use right here. Let me give you a quick rundown of what these models are good at. So first of all, U2Net and U2Net P are basically the same, only that the one ending in P is like a light version of this one. So basically the results that you'll get from using these two will be almost identical. Next, U2Net Human Segment is for detecting people but struggles with accessories like, for example, the suitcase if it were to be in front. And also the U2Net Cloth segment is good at detecting clothing but sometimes also lacks some accuracy. So play around with these beginning four as well as with Silhouetta but the two that I would advise you to use are Isnet General Use and SAM which stands for Segment Anything Model. The advantage of using Isnet General Use is what you can see right here of the golf cart being able to pick up the steering wheel along with the steering column or it could for example pick up wheel spokes from a bike. Just play around with this and see which one works best for your use case. Now, in my opinion, the very best one is the Segment Anything model. Once selected, you now have a couple of options right here. You can either input what kind of specific trait of a person or what kind of item you're looking for, or you can also use this quick list right here. For example, let's look at just selecting the body and then generate the mask again from image. These three things on the left side should disappear. All right, wonderful. And here we have just the silhouette of our guy. Now we could even go more in depth and for example, simply input the shoes. So let's do that right now and generate mask from image again. And as you can see, now just the shoes are selected. So this is a really handy tool. Instead of manually selecting the area with inpaint or outpaint, these mask generation models help you quite a bit. Now we can even go a bit more in depth and open the advanced options. For the segment anything model, you have multiple versions. The B stands for base, L stands for large, and H stands for huge. And basically the difference is each time you generate a mask, depending on which model you take, it might take longer, but also in that case, then be more accurate. So for example, this base will be fast but less accurate. This large one is balanced between speed and accuracy and I would recommend this setting for most tasks. If you have something very specific, then selecting the huge option is something you could look at. Now the further options we have down here is first of all the box threshold, which controls how sensitive the model is to detecting objects. And the default values usually work well, but you can adjust them if you see that sometimes the result might not be that great. Great. Same goes for the text threshold if you have an image where there is a billboard or something and you want to adapt that. And the maximum number of detections works in a way that when it's set to zero it just detects everything but as soon as you put it to one it only looks for that specific number of items. To demonstrate this let me go with shoes and then select the maximum number of detections to one and generate mask from image again. As you can see, there's only one shoe selected. And the way that this prioritizes it is how dominant that item is inside of that image. So for example, if there were two more shoes, but they were much bigger, one of those would be prioritized over these shoes right here. So now that you understand the principles of how the masking works, let's actually do some real world examples. So press on enhance up here and select enhance over here. Then you'll input your base image. And now you have a box down here. I'm not gonna go into upscale or variation. If you need help with that, go onto our YouTube channel. You'll see everything you need right there. What you can use, however, is number one, two, and three. And the way this works is that depending on which you select is the amount of enhancements you can do at one time. If you pick two, you could change the shoes of the guy along with his suit as a second enhancement and make sure to enable it. Now let's select what part we want to detect. So let's go for suit and then input inside of positive prompt right here what we want. So let's put a different color. Let's go for yellow suit. I'm gonna cover these settings in just a minute, but let's generate our image first. 
and here's our result with a yellow suit. Now you can see the edges are a bit messed up. Let me show you how to fix that real quick. What you want to do is go down to the in-paint setting. Here at the very bottom, mask erode or dilate. Set that between 1 and 3. I'll go with 3 for this. And then generate again. As you can see, this is a much cleaner example. So adapt your setting according to what you need. Let me show you one more example. So remove this right here and pull that down. Let's make that plane in the background pink. And press generate. And this is the result we got. It was able to change some parts of it, but as you can see, it changed the plane's shape as well. So you might have to play around with the actual settings. Let me show you one more final neat trick with which we can move our guy right here in the yellow suit into a completely different background. The way we do that is by going to the very bottom and pressing invert mask. The detection prompt we're gonna select is body. And what we want the background to be changed to is a school. And then generate. That worked wonderfully. Obviously some things are messed up, but our guy now is in a completely different setting.